All right, we are on page 346, chapter 9, lesson 2, succession. Now, this is not succession like success, I did a good job. This is succession like what comes next, or who succeeds or comes after something else happens. Okay, name, Avid 6, and the date, Science F&T, chapter 9, lesson 2, succession. Oops, page 346. Succession. Main idea slash essential question. Changed ecosystems can be restored through ecological succession. Changed ecosystems can be restored through ecological succession. Vocabulary. Climax community. Page 348. Turn to page 348. There's the word. Go backwards. A mature ecosystem that remains mostly stable over time is called a climax community. So mature meaning has developed as much as it's going to, and it's mostly stable. It's not really changing very much, if at all. Climax community, mature ecosystem, mostly stable over time. Pioneer species, page 347. Page 347, a pioneer species is one of the first species to colonize new or disturbed land. Pioneer species, first species to colonize new or disturbed land. Primary succession, page 347. Page 347. Primary succession is the establishment of plant and animal communities on ground where organisms have never existed before. Communities where organisms have never existed. Secondary succession, page 348. Turn the page to page 348. Secondary succession is the regular progression of new communities that form after such disturbances. What kind of disturbances? Fires, landslides, floods, hurricanes, all destroy stable ecosystems. Secondary succession, new communities after disturbances. Okay, that's it for our vocabulary. Red pin, natural disturbances. Natural disturbances. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, landslides, floods, tsunamis, hurricanes, and forest fires. All can disturb or destroy stable ecosystems in a very short time. Earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, floods, tsunamis, hurricanes, fires, etc. Disturb slash destroy stable ecosystems. Yet a new ecosystem will eventually establish itself. New ecosystem eventually established with an ED. Consider Mount St. Helens, a volcano in the state of Washington. In May 1980, the volcano erupted violently. That's a year before Mr. Rob was born. I wasn't even alive then. Hot lava destroyed trees over an area of 500 square kilometers. Thick deposits of ash covered the ground hundreds of kilometers away. The area surrounding the volcano became almost barren. Barren, like rocky, like nothing there. Kind of like that. Or like that. Mount St. Helens, area barren. Yet life slowly returned to the mountain and surrounding areas. Life slowly returned. Some plants survived the eruption plants survived. Wind blew in seeds of grasses and shrubs, which sprouted. Wind blew in seeds. Then larger plants moved in, followed by animals. Plants and animals. Within a few years of the Mount St. Helens eruption, flowers bloomed again on nearby slopes. So, 1980, 1983. How many years is that? Three years. Here you can see it's almost barren while it's erupting. A lot of stuff got killed, stripped away. Mostly it's just rock and ash. But three years later, there's flowers and shrubs growing again already because some plants survived, wind blew in seeds for some of the plants, and eventually more plants and animals will return. Primary succession, there it is. Flip your page over, primary succession. Succession occurs in two forms, 
primary and secondary. These forms take place under different conditions. In 1963, an erupting volcano broke through the ocean surface near Iceland. It formed a new island named Surtse. So example given, new island. Lava. The island was a barren patch of lava. Lava. Then primary succession began. Primary succession is the establishment of plant and animal communities on ground where organisms have never existed before. So, because all that lava bubbled up under the ocean, nothing lived on it before. It's just barren, blank lava. So here come the pioneer species. A pioneer species is one of the first species to colonize new or disturbed land. Pioneer species colonize new land. These small, fast-growing organisms, such as lichens and mosses, require few nutrients. Small, fast-growing, few nutrients. Blown in by wind, they begin to grow on rock and bare ground. They form soil by producing acids that break down rock. They trap soil particles that blow in. When the organisms die, they become part of the newly formed soil. Look at all those different ways they form soil, producing acids that break down the rock, trapping soil particles in the wind, dying and becoming part of the soil. So when they die, they become new soil. As soil builds up over long periods of time, grasses and other small plants can begin to grow. So from new soil will come small plants. Then slightly larger plants and shrubs sprout. So from the small plants will come larger plants. Followed by trees and the arrival of larger animals. So eventually after small plants and larger plants start growing, you'll eventually get animals. On Circe, molds and bacteria were pioneer species that quickly broke down rocks to form soil. Okay, notice those examples they gave us. Over here, lichens and mosses. Lichen, moss, and then what else did they say? Oh, we're going to get some from up here. The waste of seabirds added nutrients to the soil. In other words, birds flying over the ocean would find this island, land, poop, that's fertilizer, and that added nutrients to the soil. Soon tiny plants took hold. Today the island ecosystem includes hundreds of species. Okay, let's go look up here. Step one, volcanic activity creates a new island. It's barren or rocky. There really isn't much there. Two, pioneer species such as mold, bacteria, and visiting seabirds begin to form soil. Mold and bacteria, mold, bacteria. Now, why do the seabirds come here? Well, if you're flying out in the middle of the ocean and you want to rest your wings, you land here. And then you're a bird, so you poop here. And that makes fertilizer and nutrients. And guess what? There might be some seeds in there that can survive your digestive system. So grasses and shrubs might start growing too. Eventually, grasses, shrubs, and other species are able to thrive. For all those reasons we said before, right? Some plants, well, no plants survived because it's not a natural disturbance, but wind can blow in seeds. Um, there could be seeds on the bird, like Think about the seeds that have the little stickers and they stick to your socks. Well, that would stick to a bird feather too. And when the bird cleans its feather, it drops the seed on the ground. And now it has a chance to grow. Okay, why are pioneer species important in primary succession? Let's look at this. Pioneer species are important in primary succession because they colonize new land. Pioneer species are the first species on this new land. And they also help create new soil for larger plants and other animals to come. All right, turn the page, 348. Secondary succession, secondary succession. Fire, landslides, floods, and hurricanes can all destroy stable ecosystems in hours or even minutes. Secondary succession is the regular progression of new communities that form after such disturbances. New communities after disturbances. 
This process is quicker than primary succession because soil is already in place. Quicker than primary because of soil. Secondary succession also receives boosts from nearby plant and animal survivors. Boost from nearby plants and survivors. Pioneer species are sun-loving, usually fast-growing grasses and wildflowers. Pioneer equals fast-growing. Slower-growing, taller plants follow, including some small trees. Then, slower-growing trees are an example. Right? You have to cut your grass almost every week, but trees, trees take a long time to grow. And eventually, these trees create too much shade for grasses, shrubs, and even their own seedlings to survive. Eventually, too much shade. Other trees move in, replacing the pioneer trees. In time, stable hardwoods flourish. Over time, stable. The changes that occur in ecological succession occur quickly at first. Over time, the community of plants and animals reaches a fairly stable state. A mature ecosystem that remains mostly stable over time is called a climax community. Climax community, because over time it becomes stable. Right? So at first, there are some grasses and mosses, lichens, molds, bacterias, but those things get quickly replaced by grass and small shrubs. But over the course of decades and maybe even hundreds of years, the slow-growing trees will take over and shade out all that other stuff. And then the trees will stay there and remain. Okay, before a 1988 fire, a climax community of mature lodgepole pine trees covered most of Yellowstone National Park. Okay, so example given, lodgepole pine fire. Lodgepole pine fire in Yellowstone. The fire destroyed most of them. However, Within weeks, secondary succession was at work. New seedlings of lodgepole pine began to grow. So they started sprouting out of the ground, just tiny little, tiny little seedlings of trees, just weeks after. Today, a young forest grows. Someday, a climax forest community will cover Yellowstone again. Okay, so let's see, 1988, I was seven years old then. So that was 30 some odd, 30 years ago, 32 years ago. So you think after 32 years, the trees have probably gone from this to this. It probably looks like a forest again after 32 years. All right, that is all the phase one notes. Now let's do our phase two processing. Remember we are highlighting and we are going to annotate the key details that support our main idea. All right, first let's do the visual summary. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, landslides and floods change human and wildlife habitats. So all the things, all the disturbances that cause change. Changed ecosystems. Disturbances. Natural disturbances. Earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, floods, tsunamis, hurricanes, fires, etc. Disturb, destroy, stable ecosystems. Let's see. New Island. That's kind of like a disturbance, right? Mm, here we go. Disturbances. Ecosystems change over time through the process of succession. Succession. Primary succession. Organisms have never existed. Secondary succession. After disturbances. Let's see. New ecosystem eventually established. Life slowly returned. I think that's about it. Primary succession establishes plant and animal communities where none have existed before. Primary succession, pioneer species. Resources are limited at first, then develop over time. New land, new soil, limited resources. Okay, hey, after land is disturbed, new communities replace old ones in a process called secondary succession. Secondary succession. Disturbances. Each community changes the land, providing resources for the community that follows. 
Okay, so secondary gets a boost from the nearby plants and survivors. That's why it happens faster. Now, here is that whole thing about communities providing resources for the following. Pioneer, then slower growing trees, eventually too much shade. Over time it becomes stable, called a climax community. So as time goes on, things are slowly changing. And whatever happened before affects what happens next. The pioneer fast growing ones allow the slower growing ones to develop, but when there's too much shade, that crowds out those fast growing ones and it leaves just a stable climax community. All right, now let's annotate. We have changed ecosystems, we have restored, and we have succession. So let's see. Okay. Succession, both primary and secondary. Okay, who's doing that? The pioneer species. We have disturbances, are the changes. Here's a bunch of examples over here. And the whole point is that they disturb or destroy an ecosystem, but a new one can be established. And it takes time, it's kind of slow. Okay. Primary succession is basically new land, and there are limited resources, but the pioneer species help develop new soil. Secondary succession is just those disturbances we listed earlier, the earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, floods, tsunamis, hurricanes, fires, etc. Um, it gets a boost from things that survive or are nearby and eventually you'll end up with a stable climax community. Okay, so thinking forward to our phase four summary paragraph. Changed ecosystems can be restored through ecological succession. Natural disturbances such as, and maybe you'll say a couple, can disturb or destroy stable ecosystems. But new ecosystems eventually are established slowly or life slowly returns. Primary succession is when pioneer species use limited resources to inhabit new land, eventually forming new soil for an ecosystem. Secondary succession is succession after those disturbances we talked about before, and they get a boost from nearby plants and animals and survivors. Um, over time, conditions change and result in a stable climax community. Okay, there's an example. Now, phase three, I know I predict. Something you know that you did not write down, it has to be in your brain. I predict, make a prediction and give me a reason why. You have to say a because. All right, all of that you should be able to do in one day. All of phase one, taking notes. All of phase two, processing by highlighting and annotating the key details that support that main idea. Good job persevering with the growth mindset and roar, Wildcats.